Okay, so just disassembled Tony's SA80. Uh, there's quite a few little bits and bobs here, there, and everywhere that hold it in. There's pins on the side here, here. You have to take the top of the hop chamber off there, which will be there when it's all in situ. You have to undo the trigger bar from the gearbox, and then you can slide the whole unit out, which I'll try and do while I'm not dropping anything. Uh, I think we've got the, uh, there we go. So, at the moment this gearbox is just spinning. I suspect it stripped the piston. Um, it's probably an angle of engagement issue. Maybe to put a different piston in and different piston heads altered the spacing between that and the sector gear. I don't know. We'll take it apart and see what uh, see what bomb up have done to this and see why it's not working. Okay, so let's take the gearbox apart. The Aries ones, first thing to do, be tension it with the spring decocker. Take the spring out. Put that. Uh, another feature of Aries guns is they typically tend to have the hop unit encased by the gearbox so you can't pull them apart which is really annoying if you're going to change the hot rubber or change the inner barrel or anything like that uh, same with my Aries Tavor <coughs> I ended up actually getting I don't think it worked for this SA80 but I got an ultimate hop unit, M4 hop unit which worked very well in a Tavor, I had to machine it down a little bit but I ended up making it so that you could, it pushed into this part uh, when the gearbox and barrel were assembled everything was tight but when you disassemble the Tavor you could pull the gearbox out without bringing the hop unit with it so you effectively could then pull the hop unit out separate and change anything you wanted to and put it all back together again rather than it being captive like this anyway let's take it apart Another good tip is always try and lay out the screws the same way as the uh, as they come out of the gearbox in a pattern somewhere. It's easy to remember where they go back. Notice that none of these screws have had, have had any thread lock applied to them. Uh, which isn't brilliant. You always put thread lock on these. Because uh, there's a lot of vibration from the gearbox, obviously, when it's firing. Another thing to be careful of as well is sometimes some of these motor, motors have, especially at the front, uh, have open open ports. And once you take the gearbox apart, they're being high torque motors if, and that, as is the case here. Uh, you can end up sucking shims into the motor, which, well, if that happens, you might as well kiss your motor goodbye at that point. It's almost impossible to get them back out of the casing. The second tooth on the piston is completely sheared off. So, actually, on a bit of further inspection, um, this engagement is is fine with this piston. Put that shim back on that. Uh, you can see that as, as it turns, it does fully engage. I mean, everything's a little bit loose in here, but that, that nicely engages with the piston. And at full travel, there's enough room left for the piston to completely disengage. What I did found, and the reason why the gearbox is just spinning, is look at that. All the teeth, and there's one of them there, are sheared off. Now, it 
looks like, but I'll need to check in a minute, looks like they've wired the motor on the wrong way around. So this has just been spinning. Or the anti-reversal latch doesn't look right. Uh, or uh, it's just poor meshing between the two gears and it's just stripped all the teeth. Um, a new prol new prol gear as well yeah. okay a bit more investigation needed I think okay so after a bit more testing uh, the motor is fine it's wired the correct way around um, problem is this sector gear that uh, not sector gear uh, I can't remember if it's the motor gear or the pinion gear I forget uh, Looks all good there, but there's no teeth. No teeth on this point at all. It should look not identical to that, but reasonably similar to that. Completely missing. I know that's a, this is a different different brand, but you get the you get the picture. I, mean, I don't think we've got one that's anywhere near it. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, difficult to say whether this gear is pretty crap. Um, it's new prob banded, which uh, doesn't guarantee quality. Uh, and the, I mean the spring, the spring that's in there. I mean it's been a, it's a cut down spring and it's not done a particularly good job of it. Um, this bit should be tightened up and flattened off like this end but hey ho uh, and to be honest squeezing it you know it doesn't I know, it's not exactly scientific but it doesn't feel like it's a ridiculously powerful spring it might be maybe an M110 M120 tops certainly nothing more than that um, so you'd expect you'd expect that gear to be able to take it but mm, not the case. So I've just quickly assembled the gearbox with uh, a new gear, and uh, just to check that the motor was going the right way. A lot half the pieces aren't in here, but if I manage to get the micro switch, which is down there somewhere. Oh, let's reconnect the battery, shall we? There we go. I managed to just touch the micro switch because I've not put the gearbox completely back together. I should be able to hear that it's been. Yeah, that's not too bad. Obviously, it needs tightening up and the shims need sorting again, but that works. So, let's put it back together. While we're here, I thought they'd have a look at the, uh, the hot rubber. Because to be honest, it's an absolute pain in the backside with this being captive in part of the gearbox. Um, so let's have a look what's in here then. And from the looks of it, purple could be a Prometheus maybe. Uh, we can see that in here, probably not. A bit. I don't think we're going to get the light on it. Oh, well, maybe. Maybe. No. No, it's not happening. Anyway, let's have a look. Okay, that out. Okay, let's gently do this. Make sure all the hop's off. I think that's hop off. Let's have a look. Yeah, um, just be careful. I don't. Well, yeah, it looks like a maple leaf. It's got the uh, either water bottle or Decepticon hot. You can't see it, but it's got the water bottle or Decepticon hot patch in there. Uh, where's the hot nub? Okay, maybe it's. Dropped it, is 
it stuck to this? Where is it? Pop that out, pop the hot glue Get ready for a surprise! Ah. Oh. Well, that's pretty poor. Uh, no hot nub and no spring. Hmm. Well, don't know whether that was done as part of all the other repairs or whether that's from a while ago, but <laughs> I'm not going to have much range with no hop. So we'll sort that out as well. The um, thing you need to do with these maple leaf hops is because of the shape of the patch. If you can see it. Where is it? I'll push it down so you can sort of see it. Maybe get it on the camera there. Because of the shape of the patch, it's got like a it's like curve like that. So if my hand's the BB, it curves over the top. So you've got to use the right hot patch, really. You can get away with using the normal sort of hot, hot patches that are just a, a cylindrical tube, and they'll, they'll push down like that on the rubber. But because the hot rubber's curved like that, you really need a curved hop thing to put on it. Uh, I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Let's go and get one. Right, so I've got one of the maple leaf hot rubbers. Um, sorry, hot nubs, uh, specific to go with the type of hot rubber. You can see, if we get the hop, hop arm, that it would sit like that and push it up and down. Uh, and if we look, if I can get this to focus properly, if we look, if I rotate it 90 degrees, you can see it's actually curved. So that matches the, the hot patch in the hot rubber and make sure it's pressed down evenly like I say you can get away with just using a, a normal flat standard cylindrical hop um, tensioner but you might as well especially in this case when it's a pain in the arse to take the barrel out again you might as well put the right one in to start with so check this out now hmm. Get it zoom in a bit more. Actually, have some hop. And you can see as it pushes through, it keeps the curved shape of the hot patch. So, with the hot rubber. So, that should do the world of good. So, all back together. Uh, here we go. single shot but because we're using a lipo it and the torque on the motor it tends to do a double shot but there you go 